Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. We may not all fellowship together. We might have some differences. But I do know this. I can call anyone a brother or sister in Christ who believes it is only trusting what Christ did on the cross for salvation. Not anything to do with our good works, not anything to do with how we, uh, how we live in addition to Christ. That's a brother or a sister in Christ who has only trusted Christ for their salvation. We may not all be in the same fellowship, but our goal is to be together in unity. Now, doctrine is important. There are some things we could split over in terms of churches and things like that. But if we're honest, in any church, you're going to find that the whole group of believers has some differences that are not worth splitting over. And especially if everyone believes that it's faith alone in Christ alone for salvation. Verse 2, it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments. As the dew of Hermon and the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for the Lord commanded the blessing, even life, forevermore. If we can all at all have unity, what a blessing that is in the body of Christ. Psalm 134, Behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. How do we bless the Lord? We bless him back with our life. If we read in Romans 1, it's our reasonable service that we live a sanctified life. We want to have that service. How do we do that? We Romans 12, 1, excuse me. And in Romans 12, 2, well, we do it with the renewing of our mind, living a transformed life by reading God's word, wanting to live out what he's done for us. None of that saves you, but we want to bless him back with our life and show our love back for what he did. Psalm 135. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord, praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. <clears throat> the Lord had to have a line for which to redeem mankind. He chose to bring it through Jacob. He chose to bring it through the people of Israel. Israel has rejected him, but he chose them as his peculiar treasure, and he's going to work with them again soon in that tribulation period after the time of the rapture. Verse 5, For I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Now notice it says lowercase gods, because there's only one uppercase god. There's only one true god, the creator god. We know that God is a trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's eternally existing in all those forms, but yet he's one God. Our mind maybe can't wrap around it, but that's the truth that's presented in Scripture. And he's above all gods. There's no God that you can choose in this world that is worthwhile. It all would lead to destruction. Verse 6, whatsoever the Lord pleased, that he did in heaven and earth and in the seas and in all the deep places. He causeth the vapors to ascend from the earth, ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, both of man and beast. Now see, the Lord is the one who takes life. He smote the firstborn of Egypt. He brings judgment. And I, I know some people will say, well, wait, thou shalt not kill. Yes, man shall not kill. Man shall not make himself God. But God is God. And that's not sin for him to judge his creation. And when somebody says that, 
Well, you can't make yourself God and put yourself in a place of judging God. That's what many do. Verse 9, who sent tokens and wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh and upon his servants, who smote great nations and slew mighty kings, Sihon, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for an heritage, an heritage unto Israel, his people. The nation of Israel has lost much of their land, but one day when the Lord comes back after the tribulation, he will restore all the land to the nation of Israel, and only Israel will dwell there. When Joshua came in, they were told to conquer all the land and inhabit it all, and they didn't do that. They made a covenant with uh, some groups, and they didn't uh, fully possess the land. And what that shows us is that man can accomplish, cannot accomplish what only God can. When Jesus rules and reigns, he will accomplish all that he's promised. Verse 13, Thy name, O Lord, endureth forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent himself concerning his servants. The idols of the heathen are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. You know, we can look. What have we put before God? What have we worshipped instead of God? It's very easy to get caught up in that. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their mouths. The idols and the figurines, whether they be gold, silver, wood, whatever, the eyes on those idols, they can't see. We shouldn't have idols in Christianity. We shouldn't have any statues, I believe, whatsoever that we're looking at. I'm not talking about having some figurine in your house. I'm saying that... We shouldn't have idols, things that we're having in pictures. I'm not fond of pictures of Jesus because I believe most pictures of Jesus are inaccurate. They, they show him with long hair. He didn't have long hair according to the scripture. It, you know, And he wasn't this uh, handsome man in terms of all the pictures that they depict of him. He just looked average and ordinary. It says there's no form or comeliness about him. He was able to always slip into the crowd because he just looked like an average person. It was his message that was unique. And he himself is absolutely special. Verse 18. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. Well, uh, if you trust in those idols... One day, you won't have eyes that work. You won't be able to speak. You won't be able to hear. You, you know, uh, well, I guess, I don't know. You'll probably be able to hear yet. But uh, you won't be able to see because the darkness of hell is going to be unique. Um, but it's what a horrible thing that falls upon any that don't trust Christ. If you haven't trusted Christ today, trust him today. Verse 19, Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. Bless the Lord, O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Ye that fear the Lord, bless the Lord. Blessed be the Lord out of Zion, which dwelleth at Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. We'll end there with the reading of his word. May the Lord bless you today. And let's end saying, Praise ye the Lord.